We've been speaking to uh, a number of individuals who went to Notre Dame Law School and graduated alongside of Amy Coney Barrett. And one of those is a guest with us now via Skype. She's been generous with her time uh, with us this afternoon. Kenlyn Colleen was a classmate of Amy Coney Barrett's, and she's a leadership and empowerment coach. And she graduated in the top 10 percent of her law class at the University of Notre Dame. And she served as an attorney uh, around the country. And Kenlyn joins us now via Skype. Kenlyn, thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate having you. Dana, thanks for having me. Of course. I wanted to get your response and the response of people who who knew Amy Coney Barrett uh, at that time when you all graduated in 97 from Notre Dame because this letter comes out from Rhodes and these people weren't even, uh, many, most of them didn't even know her, didn't, weren't even there the same time that she was and they were contesting not even the confirmation but the simple fact that she even had the qualifications to be nominated which to me I thought it's one thing to have an ideological difference with someone but to say that the ideological difference undermines the the academic and 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 other accomplishments that they have to be nominated for something like this that seemed to be a little bit over the top and I wanted to get your your reaction to this no no Amy Coney Barrett is massively qualified for a job on the Supreme Court she is she was in our law class the smartest person in our class and that was demonstrated through her high achievement of her grade point average but also um, getting the highest grade in the course in each of the courses that she took other than I think maybe three or four and not only that though she is a stellar human being she's an outstanding human and she was that human when we were all in uh, law school together she just she's understated and she's smart and she's centered and grounded and is one of those people that just had probably from birth she just had integrity and i'm and i'm speaking from um, a totally different political side of the spectrum. And when I saw that her name came up as a nominee, I was thrilled. Oh, wow. And that's, I mean, it's, it's high praise hearing this from people like you and, and her other classmates because it gives us a better idea, more so than, you know, all of the 30,000 foot view headlines that we get from other media outlets. I mean, we're really from the people who knew her and they knew how hard she applied herself in class and how hard she worked to understand the law and the, uh, lack of a better way to put it, the industry in which she wanted to work. The way that it's put out is that um, some of the, so, and I've read so many pieces about this, It they almost made her sound like she was this uh, uh, firebrand in college and almost as if she was just really she was pressuring people religiously and and everything else and I I just thought that that well let's talk to some more of her classmates because I'm not really getting that I'm not really getting that from what I'm reading about her your thought uh, oh no 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 I mean that's the thing about when you weren't there you can make up all kinds of stories about something but you know, law school in general is um, a really difficult pressure cooker. And those of us who went to Notre Dame, at least in the class of 1997, um, it was probably the best experience we could have because we're also we're so supportive of each other and not competitive. And that's not normal for law schools. Um, so inside of that context, like Amy was just another person. She wasn't she wasn't um nobody did that nobody pressured anybody we were all really good supporters of each other and she's understated that's kind of the cool thing about her 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 confidence and her conviction uh she didn't need to prove it it's just it was who she was i don't even think people knew that she was at the top of the class until you see like the grades posted and then all of a sudden you keep seeing her name as the person at the top of each of the classes um, with her exam. So no, there's no pressure there. It was lots of curiosity, lots of learning. She would be in professor's offices talking because her intellect was, um, was just off the charts. And so she found it stimulating to talk to the professors in our, in our school. Um, but I, she's not, she was never opinionated or bombastic or, or 
dogmatic in any way. It was just a beautiful environment for learning. And, sh and she struck me as just actually a really beautiful human. And I may not even agree. I don't know what her politics are, but I, and I may not agree with her. But one of the things that made me feel good was that the type of person she is, I feel like in my heart, I can trust that. And that's, you don't hear that a lot in politics or in policy discussions, and especially in discussions about Supreme Court nominees. You you definitely don't hear that. Uh, we're speaking with Kenlyn Colleen, who graduated with Amy Coney Barrett, 97 Notre Dame. And it, honestly, you sound like you had just like the, the best uh, experience in law school. I've never heard. Uh, you guys went to a very unique, you had a very unique experience because everybody that I know who went to law school, they're like, oh, it's so stressful and so competitive. But it sounds like it was really a great environment. And I think some of that is because there were probably a great group of people that got together and were able to support each other. Um, one last question that I that I had for you, because I, I always look at stuff like this. You, I, I, I assume that anybody who's nominated Obvi you, they're going to have opinions in their personal lives and they're they're going to have ideas and that they hold dear in their personal lives and how that's applied when they're on the benches is, is entirely separate from what they how they believe and and what they participate in and how they act privately I mean they're two different things which I think we struggle with and and particularly um, amateur lawyers I would say I pretend to be one on air uh, every, people struggle with that to separate that because they think oh no you're it's just one and the same and I think that they conflate um, that vocation and then the the personal ideals and I saw that the National Women's Law Center they were opposing her nomination outright and they said that uh, quote she doesn't represent all women and I thought well it, that some people might make that argument maybe towards Sonia Sotomayor or maybe even Ruth Ginsburg just because they believe differently that but I think that women aren't just a homogenous group and when we have varied beliefs so wouldn't I feel like we would want that represented but then at the same time it really doesn't have any relevancy on the court yeah I mean the the thing is her jurisprudence goes back to her clerking with Antonin Scalia. And so it's so the way she thinks about how to do con, constitutional law comes from her training. And it's very precise. So I kind of like to say it to people that whatever profession you're doing, you have your 10,000 hours in it and that's what's made you an expert. And I can't just come in and do it and be at the same level of expertise as you. It's similarly with law. There's an, a language to it. There's a way, there's a methodology to it. And in her training, there's a very specific way that you look at the constitution and interpret it. And she'll, she'll do it according to that. And, and she's, and she's smart enough to, I mean, it takes a lot of intelligence to deal with modern issues yeah. and, and a document that was written so long ago and really navigate who, who we are and the future of who we're becoming. I mean, it's, it's a, and I under, so I understand each side's paranoia, but at the same time, there's a rigor to it. Right. And she's trained in the rigor of that. I think that's a great way to put it. Well, this is going to be definitely a, an interesting, an interesting hearing. And everyone says that because uh, you always worry. And I don't, I, I, I don't like seeing it coming from the right or left. I would just like to see a fair and impartial hearing and none of the nastiness because you know, no matter where people come from, you, you still wince when it does get nasty because if it's not for the person sitting there then it's for the integrity of the system uh and and how far we've fallen you kind of just think oh gosh really we're here and this is this is kind of our our reasoning now um but everyone so far has said that yeah she even no matter how heated it gets and i think just to dovetail in what with what you just said the rigor with which she was that that she trained in that's going to sustain her throughout that that hearing process do you agree Oh my gosh, totally. She's really like, I love this word equanimist. Like she's steady and she's not going to be thrown off. And, and, you know, that's really why I wanted to come on your show because in a, in a world where both sides are just off gassing emotional reactivity, I wanted to be like, I'm not even of a, the party that nominated her. And I, I, 
support her from my heart space and I trust her as a human being. And uh, issues are not black and white. And the more that we can get into like calming our nervous systems and and hearing other people, I think that's what we get to create going forward. But yeah, she's she's being nominated in probably one of the most stressful, um, conflictual times yes. in our history. And I think she's going to prove to be stable and steady through it. And all of this going all the way back to those those law school days, Notre Dame, 1997, it sounds like a great group of people was there together. I kind of want to go back in time and go there now because I mean that it just sound I mean it sounds amazing. You just don't hear of experiences like that. Kenlin, I want to thank you for coming on and and talking about this um, and giving us your perspective because you have that front row. You were there and you you just have an ability to speak about this where other people really don't. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing that with us and this was a great conversation and um, I loved having I loved having that that discourse uh, because you know, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. There's things that we, on which we all agree. So thank you so much, Kenlin Colleen.